All right, we should be up and running. Um, excited to do another uh, Tuesday night episode here uh, with Three Down Development, joined by my co-host, Braden Ray. Uh, and excited to talk a little defense tonight. I know not the side of the ball you're most fond of, Braden, but always good to learn and good to have you here to help us uh, work through a couple topics tonight, actually, um, which, which I'm pretty excited about being three safety defense um, and uh, some of the stuff that Iowa State has made, um, you know, really, really popular, I think, in the last couple of years. And then we'll get to some Canadian, uh, some CFL film breakdown uh, and look at the tight front. So, you know, obviously being a channel called Three Down Development, um, you know, everything we do is going to come from kind of the Canadian perspective. So I will hit on uh, some things from the first presentation in the second presentation as well, um, you know, once we get rolling there. But for, we're going to talk four down football for a bit here, Braden. It's going to be different for us. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I'm going to dive right into it. Um, as usual, you know, help us out. Um, we really, we're really fortunate. We have such a great following uh, of dedicated people that are always throwing a like um, on the video uh, and, and obviously subscribing. If you haven't already, uh, please do. Uh, it makes a big difference to us. And, you know, as we try and make this as consistent uh, an operation as possible, um, you know, it's always easier to have. Uh, more people watching the videos. It helps us out in a lot of ways. So please subscribe, hit the like, um, you know, let your fellow coaching friends know, players know, uh, you know, people, just anyone who wants to learn the game, um, you know, it's it's a free resource and, and we want to help reach as many people as we can. So no further ado, I'm going to dive right into it. Um, really excited to be talking three safety defense. It, it's a project um, that myself, I've been working on for a while. Uh, really since the, the start of quarantine, um, it was something that piqued my interest um, and uh, really made me think about the offenses that I'm seeing run in Canada um, and, and some solutions that the three safety you know, defense has to those problems. And it's one of the things that I thought, you know, this is something I should learn more about. This is, you know, you look at the Big 12, they're scoring points. You know, offensive guys like you, Braden, the Big 12 is like heaven. Everyone's, you know, throwing the ball over the place. Every year there's three quarterbacks that are breaking records and, you know, three defensive coordinators getting fired probably about, about every year. And uh, anything that works in the Big 12 defensively, you know, has really got to kind of catch your interest. Um, and, and for me, it was the three safety defense that Iowa State was running. And like I said, I think for our Canadian viewers, uh, it's got some it's got some stuff in it. Um, that will translate well to the Canadian game. Um, so, as usual, follow us on all our social media stuff, uh, Three Down Dev on Twitter, uh, at Three Down Development on both Instagram and TikTok. Um, and obviously, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Helps us out a ton. So, what is the three safety defense? And I'm going to go through a brief slideshow here um, with some graphics that I think help outline some of the non traditional aspects. Um, of, of the, the system. Um, and, and then we're going to get to some film and some cutups. One of the big things is there are aspects of this defense that are fundamentally different from traditional defense. You think of traditional defense, you think of edge rushers, um, you know, usually you're thinking of either single high or, or two high players. And really that's what you're going to get to out of the three high or the three safety look consistently. You're just not going to necessarily show it as much pre-snap. Um, you know, you think about having whether it's three down or four down, you're still going to usually have those two edge rushers trying to force the ball back inside, you know, to your linebackers here really. And, and through the use of the tight front uh, and the back front, uh, which are kind of derivatives we'll get into, you know, you're really trying to knock the ball off the table. And the big thing that jumps out to you is you look at this and go, wow, the team's going to be able to run the football. Right. You look at this picture and I know the offensive coordinator and everybody's going, I think I can run the ball into that look. Um, and certainly, you know, this is a defense that while it's been adapted, you know, to defend a variety of formations. And I think as a base system, it can be run against any you know, type of opponent. It certainly stems from defending the spread. Right. You're going to see pictures like this in the Big 12 uh, a lot. You're going to see two by two, three by one, uh, you know, even when there's a tight end on the field you know, it's usually that tight end is a pretty dynamic athlete, uh, you know, not to say that they're not good blockers, but they're at least very capable pass catchers. Um, and with quarterbacks, not only having the ability to run more uh, option routes, RPOs, um, the traditional model of defense gets strained, right? I think we've, we've seen that at every level. Um, so this is something that really caught my attention is, hey, this is a way to kind of 
you know, attack the spread um, and, and especially the spread zone run game. And that's what we're going to get into. So just in terms of some, some base, you know, housekeeping here, uh, we'll refer to the two uh, corners as just that, the corners. You'll have your field and your boundary safety, which are your two deep players here that are about 10 yards off the ball. Uh, you'll have your field and your boundary linebacker uh, and then your middle linebacker. Uh, and then you'll have your third safety. Usually this guy gets a fancy name depending on what team you study. Uh, I called him the star in this particular study for me. Uh, so we'll refer to him as the star. I know sometimes the star has a connotation as being the nickel. Um, so, but in this, in this defense, you know, this is really your nickel defender, your third safety, um, your, your fifth DB in a four, two, five personnel. And what was interesting to me is I looked at this as an offensive coach and said, you know, I want to be able to attack space or numbers. And this front gives you the, or this system, I should say, gives you the opportunity to change how you defend different looks be fluid and force the ball to go to places where you already have tacklers. That's really the basics of, of typical defense, right? The four down front, you're looking at your two edge rushers, bringing the ball back to your inside linebackers, right? If the ball tries to go to the perimeter, here's the opposite here. We're going to knock the ball off the table to where our linebackers are in those overhang positions. And then that allows them to play and we'll get into defending RPOs and all that, that allows them to play pass first run second and still have a chance to be effective run defenders um so that that's kind of what drew me to the front uh and that's what we'll call these players here as we go through it so in terms of the defensive line um and there's lots more that can be done obviously out of this system anytime you're you know you're looking at a clinic and you know you're watching um you're watching you know an hour's worth of stuff you're not going to get absolutely everything that goes into you know, making that, that defense, what it is, there's a lot more you can do and change. And this is not a, you know, I, I'm not claiming to be a GA at Iowa state, you know, I'm sure there's a lot more people that could give you more context there. Uh, but this was just from my film study, the notes that I thought would be really beneficial for coaches. So in terms of the defensive line, uh, I just called the one end, our anchor, the other end, our defensive end. And then you have your nose. Usually you're going to be in some derivative of the tight front. Now they spend a lot of time uh, in what I've heard called a back front which just means you're going to have a four eye to the side of the back. Some teams it'll be a three, some teams it'll be a four eye. Um, you know, that that's kind of up to preference. And we'll talk when we talk about defending different run schemes, why the difference uh, for some, and then you're going to have what's called a heavy five technique away from the back. Now this is probably the most critical position on the, uh, on the, on the defensive line, at least to me, um, because you need that heavy five to generate a pass rush. Um, so that's the only player you're going to have in this front. Uh, and this is the first, the, one of the first things coaches say to me is, well, how are you going to get a pass rush out of that? We'll talk a little bit about it. Um, but being able to have a five technique rush the edge is valuable. Uh, but what we mean by heavy is against any sort of run. So if we get, you know, a base block here from the tackle, this anchor end is going to go inside of it. So it end up playing the B gap. It ends up playing like the tight front. In my mind, I conceptualize it like the tight front. Um, because that's ultimately what it becomes against, uh, against run schemes. Um, your nose, and we'll get to this in a second, is going to play what's called a lag technique, meaning that if the center steps this way, the nose will play straight ahead, putting him in the backside A. Okay, If the center steps this way, the nose is going to go straight ahead, putting him in the backside A. The nose is going to end up in the A gap uh, to the side of the back or away from the side of the run, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, and, and you can have them read the center. I know a lot of coaches will just have them slant to the side of the back. Uh, if the back is in the offset, simpler, a little bit simpler than having your, your player read it. Um, but that the mic is going to play off of that. So if the nose is slanting to the back, the mic will have the opposite today. If the nose is lagging, the mic will read which gap the nose plays and he'll have the opposite gap. And again, the nose should end up, if we got zone strong towards the anchor here, the nose should end up in the weak A, Mike should end up in the strong A. Our anchor should uh, play heavy or uh, like the Saban tree calls the Jimmy pony um, where they're going to play the C gap on pass, but, but play inside against the run. Uh, and obviously the four eye on the backside can't get reached by the tackle playing through the B gap, whether it's a three technique or four eye uh, that stays the same. Uh, so that's the base defensive front. And we'll show a couple examples of, of, you know, the tight front versus the back front, really it all plays the same. Um, the only advantage to the back front is you get the one five technique. 
uh, and that allows you to, you know, have one edge rusher that's immediately in the C gap uh, on pass. Um, so here's the base structure against two by two. Uh, and, and one of the things that I think that really drew me to this was your ability to disguise coverages uh, and disguise pressures and, and different things. If you look at this here, right, obviously, you know, you have your three linebackers, you could blitz any combination of them, but having that three safety look really allows you to rotate coverage later, right? Because you have that safety, you know, really it's middle of the field closed and middle of the field open, right? Pre-snap. So you're able to do a lot of things with that star, um, depending on the athlete you have there and depending on the team you're playing, you know, you have a tremendous amount of options, which is, again, I think really valuable uh, as a structure. Um, we're going to talk mostly the base structure stuff today and maybe get into some pressures near the end. Um, but in terms of coverage, you can play any of your kind of base, middle of the field, open coverages, quarters, palms, uh, two read, just straight cover two, um, all of that stuff is available. You can play man match, zone match, uh, because you have those three on two triangles, right? We have our, our field and boundary backer um, that are able to be the low wall in the triangles. You have your corner who's able to kind of play that, uh, you know, whether it's cut cut coverage where they're going to carry the one vertically, um, you know, or, or like a mod quarters, you know, man on demand or man on deep on that number one. And then you have your safety capping those two overhangs so your linebacker doesn't have to play the vertical of two. So again, you could get into any coverage there and there's a lot of great clinics on YouTube, um, you know, on those different types of coverages, but basically, you know, you have your triangle here. Uh, you can play any of those, those three on two coverages. You could play bracket. You, you could do a lot of different things. You're three on two. You're in a great position. Um, the key thing here is these, these next two players. And this is what I'll spend most of my time on um, is your mic is your fourth rusher. So if you were in like a four, two, five personnel, your mic really could be your like lighter defensive end, right? Your, your pass rusher, um, you know, your, your tweener somewhere between a linebacker and a defensive end uh, could also be, you know, a, a, just a linebacker that, that has some pass rush ability or, or is just a good athlete finisher in space. Um, if you were in four, two, five personnel, that, that would be that player. Um, it's, it can be a true mic, but there's definitely some advantages to having a, a pass rusher there because typically that player is going to be the fourth rusher. So what we mean by that is really they have the quarterback. Um, this is the first, like I, I mentioned before, the first thing people say to me, offensive coaches, uh, you know, say to me and Braden chime in at any point here, um, you know, with, with your thoughts as an offensive coach. But the first thing that people say is, how are you going to generate a pass rush and how are you going to contain the quarterback? And a big part of what I was looking at, different teams do things different ways. Um, obviously, if you want to play drop eight, you know, you, you are, you're only going to be rushing three. So you got to find a way to, to get after the passer that way. Um, but I was a little skeptical when I first started learning about this is, oh, the mic has the quarterback. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, if that's, you know, your best, one of your best finishers, you know, what a great way to let that player be where they need to be, right? I can't think of how many times I've played a mobile quarterback and my rush end wins the rep, but the quarterback escapes up into the pocket or escapes out the other side. Um, this puts that player in a position to play the quarterback anywhere they go. And again, you can play drop eight and, and stunt the front and do different things to try and contain the quarterback. Um, but that fourth rusher basically gives your D line freedom. And one of the things that Iowa state does is they stunt all over the place. They'll run every stunt in the book um up front just to try and collapse the pocket and force the quarterback out uh, or force the quarterback up knowing that they have that second wave rusher uh who's there to play the quarterback and it was one originally it was one of my biggest concerns about the about the defense um and it's really become one of my favorite things about it is how efficiently uh you're able to to stay with mobile quarterbacks um you know obviously you have to have the right body there uh, and that's something maybe on second and long or third and long um, you know, you're able to get an even more athletic player in there if you're, if you're playing a, a really athletic quarterback. Um, but it's definitely something, uh, you know, that that allows you some flexibility as the defensive play caller. Um, and the second piece is the running back in two by two is the responsibility of the star linebacker uh, and or the star safety. And as running backs become more a part of the passing game, you know, that's something offensive coaches I know are always looking to pick on is get the running back out. Right. <laughs> get the running back involved in the pass route, whether it's going 
empty pre-snap check release or, or running a release out of the backfield. You know, I, I can't think of how many times, you know, we've said Braden and, and stuff we've done together, where it's, Hey, if we get the running back on the mic, we're going to love that matchup. Um, and, and now it's not the mic. It's, it's your nickel defender, you know, is responsible for that back. And I just think it, A, if, if you're playing any sort of man to man, it's great. But also when you're playing zone, um, if you need to push, and we'll talk about that, say we get the back, if the back were to release, uh, if the back were to release here to the field, right, and, uh, you know, we were to get some kind of in concept here. If and we get the running back on the mic, we're going to love that matchup. Cool. And um, we're going to – And now it's not the – Sorry, mic, I'm not sure where that's coming from. defender, you know, is responsible for that back. And I just think it – Is that on your end, Brito? Any sort of man-to-man, -man, it's great. Mm, but no, also, sir. playing zone, um, if you need to push, and we'll talk about that, say we get the back – if the back were to release – uh, if the back were to release here to the field, right, and, uh, you know, concept little, here. A little tech issue back. here. Sorry about that. Can you hear me still, Braden? I got you here still, Coach. We're good. That's weird. I'm not sure what uh, tab that was coming from. I, had, I think it just oh, – something opened on mine when I uh, when I closed the Zoom there. Well, it wouldn't be an episode without uh, hey. some sort of technical issue. Do you, want to, no, but, do you want to hit mute quick on your end and listen to the stream and make sure you still got my audio? Yeah. So if we were to get uh, if we were to get a push, this is the beauty of live television. If we were to get a push here uh, with the back releasing and then an in route, you know, typically it'd be your Mike linebacker that might now have to relate to this dig route. Um, whereas if your uh, if your star is playing this position, now you can push to the flat defender or the flat defender to that running back and have the star um, take that dig route, um, you know, which is, which can be a really effective, you know, way to handle the running back getting out. So in terms of base responsibilities, that's what we're looking at. I'm going to try and get to my next slide here. It's not letting me. Oh, now I lost my, Man, I'm struggling. We're good on YouTube, right. Coach. There we go. It's all good. Okay. So here's what it looks like. Um, here's what it looks like when you're actually in the play. So I thought this was a great visual. So if you're this quarterback, what are you looking at right now? Coach, we don't have your screen right now. Just to oh, thank you. Appreciate it. I'm setting a record for, for tech issues in one episode here. Big save. All right, got me now there, uh, there, Braden. We got gotcha. you. Sweet. Let's get back on the horse. All right. So, go. if if we're looking at, I just had it up. <laughs> what on earth did I do here? Big. There we go. It helps if you don't delete your own stuff. Keys to victory from today. There we go. Step one: when you're teaching something, don't delete it while you're teaching it. So, if you're this quarterback here, right? Here's our fourth rusher. So you can see this really looks like a traditional, you know, four, four player rush. I like, cause you can kind of see that second wave, right? You have your initial rush and then you have the, this big gap opening up here. I'm not sure what stunt they would have ran um, to, uh, to open this up. And then the mic is able to, to plug that gap that gets created. The running back stays in here. So the star you can see has kind of come down. If, he, if this back releases, uh, you know, that's that's the star's responsibility. Um, but you can kind of clearly see that role of your traditional mic backer in coverage, that middle of the field coverage player. And then you can see the split field coverage here. They're playing three on two and three on two. I don't know about you, Braden, but from a quarterback standpoint, there's not a lot of space or leverage to be had here. No, no, that's a, you know, if, if I'm looking at from a quarterback's perspective, I'm, my numbers aren't great. And the middle of the field's really taken away by that. Uh, by the star player. So it's, uh, you know, this really makes, you really have to do a great job of, of teaching pictures here from, from the quarterback's perspective, because it really uh, changes a lot of things from a traditional sense. Absolutely. And this isn't even like a lot of people will run drop eight out of it. If they're really worried about the passing game, um, which you can do, I'm not going to cover it a ton. Um, you know, cause I think a lot of defensive coaches want to be rushing more than three guys. 
consistently, but it's something you can do. But you just see here how two by two, you're, you know, in the pass game, whatever your coverage rules are, again, whether you're playing man match, whether you're playing palms, whether you're playing, you know, old school quarters, if you're three on two, you're going to have good leverage. So that's kind of the picture you're looking for in, in two on two, right? You have your, your, your fourth rusher clogging up the, the hole that opens up. You have your star on the back and your three on two across the board. Now in terms of run fits, um, you see there the little color coded here. Your heavy five is going to play the B gap away from the back. Again, that's only if it gets a down or if it gets a base block uh, or a reach block or a down block, he can chase the dive. He is B gap responsible in the run game. Um, your, your backer away from the back is going to play the C gap from depth. Okay. So he, that's, you know, one of, one of the kind of hot spots in the defense um, is you're going to have to play that C gap from depth, but we'll show some film of, of being able to do it really effectively against good teams. And I've seen lots of high school film. Um, you know, there's lots of other good clinics on YouTube here on the same topic with, with high school film of guys doing it at a high level. And you can play with the width you want your player to have, right? So if you're not getting full field RPOs, you don't necessarily need to be this wide. Um, the other thing is you can get the back. Um, you can get the backer to the side of the back totally out of the fit if you want. So the star does not have a gap in, in 10 personnel. So what you can do is if you don't want your boundary backer responsible for the quarterback, cause you're so worried about the say it's zone read RPO or glance RPO. If you, if you want uh, that player totally out of the fit, then you can have your star become a quarterback player. So basically you're going to get, if you were to get, you know, say we got zone and we'll watch this actual clip in a few minutes, but if you get zone action this way, you can be three on two and, and play the RPO with those three. And then the star can become the quarterback player. The star can drop down and become that sixth fitter, um, which allows that that backer that's in conflict, you know, to uh, to remain out of conflict and out of the fit. So this is just what it looks like from the end zone cut. So again, if, if we get uh, if we get the back here is to the opposite side, so the boundary backer is out of the fit. The star is going to play the C gap uh, and ultimately have a quarterback to cut back. We're going to lag the center heavy five away from uh, from the back and then the backer away is in the fit from depth. So what about three by one? Uh, if we get three by one, the structure changes a little bit. You'll see the star is now playing inside leverage of number three. Your field backer is usually playing inside leverage of number two. Um, depending on what you want to do coverage wise, the depth and alignment of the corner and safety can certainly change. But now the star is going to help you have four on three to the field, allowing you to play whatever split field coverages, um, you know, you, you play within your program. Again, quarters, all that stuff is on the table. Um, you can even play stubby and mini uh, lock, um, as, as the great coach Vass calls it. A lot of names for that coverage. Try lock for us up north of the border. Um, but, you know, depending on the leverages you play with, you can play all those coverages. So that gets you your four on three to the field. Uh, we'll go over some backside options in the boundary, um, but as a base, you know, a lot of teams will play, you know, like a cone or bracket on the backside number one receiver, um, you know, especially uh, if you got a dominant X, you know, it's, it's good to be able to have in your system a way to double them, um, you know, without changing a ton. Um, the other thing I didn't mention at the start, please, any questions you have, throw them in the chat, especially the people that watch these live, like I'll stay and answer the questions. Um, you know, I, I won't let any question go unanswered there. Uh, so appreciate everyone who's here. And if you also, if you just throw, throw something in the chat, where you're from, where you're watching it from, whatever, it helps uh, YouTube spit it out to more people as well. Um, in terms of in the box, the star is now relating to the three receiver. Okay. So now we need a new quarterback player. Uh, we need, or we need a new player to be on the back, I should say. So now the boundary or will linebacker is going to relate to the running back. Previously, they were relating to the number two receiver, but now there is no number two receiver. So, uh, you know, you're relating to the running back uh, and then your mic can still be your fourth rusher. So the field, this is what we're going to get from a coverage standpoint. So typically the star, if you're playing split field and you're not poaching the boundary safety, uh, the star is going to uh, match three vertically. Um, if three goes, uh, if three goes out, um, he can pass them off and, and work through whatever your coverage rules are there. 
Um, you can play a variety, but in terms of their base, uh, if they're not playing drop eight and that Mike is the, is the fourth rusher, um, then the, uh, that star player will be responsible for, for three until he can pass three to number to the will uh, in the boundary. If they're playing drop eight, obviously you can pass them to the mic. Um, the, uh, the field backer there is usually going to push through the flat in, in most quarters type coverages. The corner has got to match one vertically. And again, we're making sure that that linebacker doesn't have to play two vertically. So the safety would then match two vertically. Again, this is like a base camp rule type thing. Um, and, uh, and you can play any, any type of coverage, you know, you want any type of cover three, um, you know, cover four, uh, you play, man, there's lots of options available to you there on the backside. Usually you're going to get a bracket or cone double team on the boundary wide out. Certainly if you have a really good player there, this is a great option. Um, and it allows you, you know, depending on the, how detailed you want to get, you could have, you know, the, the corner, um, play outside leverage. And if, if the number one goes underneath and you could post the safety or you could have a true double, just lock them up anywhere, anywhere they go. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things you can do there, but that's typically what you're going to see on the backside of three by one. Okay. You can also see like a poach or call from the safety where the safety will now take three vertically, um, from the field. So the boundary corner is so low boundary corners by themselves. Again, the structure allows you to hide that really late. Um, and, you know, now you can let that number three go to the backside safety uh, and then poach it uh, with the backside safety. That allows the, the, uh, the star uh, to play the vertical of number one, sorry, number two. Um, and then there would be a number one out there. You could, you could cloud the corner uh, and have the safety take uh, three, uh, or sorry, number one vertically. The last thing they do, and they'll do this a little bit um, to help out with the run fits. We'll talk about the, the subtle change in the run fits with trips. You don't have to do this. It's just a tool in their toolbox um, where the boundary corner will play trap. So the boundary corner is going to be D gap defender. Uh, they're going to collision number one and then get their eyes inside. The boundary safety will play the deep half. And then the C gap um, would be the responsibility of the corner uh, in that case. Just a couple different options on the backside. All right. So if you get empty, I just threw this in there because, you know, we're talking 10 personnel, um, you know, and I'm sure as an offensive guy, Braden's going to be throwing it. Uh, yeah. But what if you get empty and we move this guy over here, move this guy over there. So I, I threw in the empty slide just to make sure I have my bases covered. I always uh, prepared. Any, any easy answers. But um, if we get empty, basically you'll play the trip side like trips. And you'll play the boundary two side like it's just 22. And then the mic has the quarterback. Okay. And again, you could, you could drop eight uh, as well um, and, and have the mic be a whole player in the middle of the field. Uh, they play a lot of Tampa as well, like Tampa two. Um, maybe we'll do another one of these and we'll deep dive on all the coverages they play out of this, Braden. But um, where, where that star becomes kind of the pole runner in the Tampa two. Um, but this would be how they play the empty. Basically the way they play 22 to the two receiver side and the way they play 31 to the three receiver side, which is one of the things I like because if the back gets out, if the back releases, it's built into the rules. So it's, it's you know, you're playing three receivers, right? Say number three goes out. That's just like if it was two by two and the back went out and the star's going to push. So that, right. that's something I think, you know, brings huge value. Um Couple Coach Warren from Kitchener just down the street. Love it. The Fighting KCI Raiders. Appreciate you watching. And uh, Coach Adrian from Bold, Ontario. Well represented in, in Ontario today on the viewers. Um, so that that's the base structure against empty. So I'll go to a I'll go to a few clips here. Um, and uh, you know, Braden, again, feel free to chime in. You know, as we as we go through this, um, anything jump out at you, Braden, while I'm getting this film up and running here. Yeah, no, I think, you know, I think the big thing is it really, you know, like you talked about earlier, those you and me have spent off seasons trying to get backs involved in offenses and getting, you know, if you have an athletic quarterback being able to win, this is a great, this does a great job of being able to match personnel really well. Um, especially, you know, when you get into these big 12 offenses with, with athletic quarterbacks and uh, where they get, like to get the, uh, the quarterback or the running back involved in the pass game. 
For sure. And we'll start with some clips of the fourth rusher. Um, again, just because that was the first kind of sticking point, you know, to me of, hey, how, how is this going to work? How are we going to make sure, you know, quarterbacks are starting to be, you know, the point guard on the basketball team is also the quarterback. Not some of the time. It seems like almost all the time now. Right. And so instead of it being the first baseman, it's, it's the point guard on the basketball team. And that's a much different scenario in the open field. Um, so here, 23 is the fourth rusher. Um, you'll see uh, they run a little bit of a line movement here. So this is something they'll also do where they'll slant. They'll, they'll do stuff with their line to make it a little more predictable um, about where the back's going to – or sorry, where the quarterback's going to escape to. Okay, and that's a whole other clinic in itself. But you'll see here they actually – are all slanting to this side, right? Really forcing the quarterback out to the field. And then 23 knows that's where the quarterback's going to escape to. Right? So now we see, okay, well, what do we want in the pass rush? Well, I want one-on-ones in the pass rush. I'm not going to get them in the 30. Well, there's a one-on-one, -on -one, right? With a five technique. He's winning on the high side. Beautiful. Now 23 is in space. And if he wants to step up, we can play it we've got vision on the quarterback and this, this player does not Right. And that makes it really tough, you know, for the offensive lineman, you see here, 23 weights out the quarterback doesn't take a great angle, but again, you know, we're, we're able to contain the quarterback there. Here's another one with the fourth rusher. So again, we're, we're able to add the fourth rusher. This one also shows the star uh, on the back fairly well as well. So there's our fourth rusher again, showing up where we need them to show up. Three on two. <laughs> now there's a bit of a bust down here, right? This is the coverage clinic, okay? Uh, three on two, and then we're one on one on the back. Another one here. Again, I think this might be the wide cut of the first one we showed. So again, you got your high side rusher here forcing the quarterback up. He's into these two defensive linemen. If he's out, the linebacker has him. Okay, forces the ball out. All right, so there's the fourth rusher. I'm going to come back to this one because uh, that's trips. Okay, let's take a look at uh, some basic zone fits. Okay, so again here, this would just be the field backer. Okay, walked up, not as wide here with the through series in the boundary. Okay, um, setting the edge as the C-gap player. See your tight front play out. Backer's going to play off the lag. Okay, and then here, this would be if you don't have your middle safety there, you know, this is a little bit different, um, but just really showing the tight front aspect of it here. Forcing the ball to come back into the teeth of the defense. So you see it really clean here. This is just a great example of the lag technique. So you're going to see the nose work off the back hip of the center. Makes it really challenging for this to get vertical to the mic, right? We see our four eyes square in the backside B gap. This, if this is going to cut back, it's got to go lateral first, which buys these players the time to hang in this RPO window and then play the football. Again, and I know this is, you know, Wisconsin's got a pretty good defense, but there's nowhere to go, right? B gap, B gap, the lag cancels the A gaps. The ball's got to spill off the table one way, spill off the table the other way. Um, and to me, that's the beauty of this front. This one I got cut a little short. This is a great clip of uh, 
of the technique we want to see uh, from both defensive ends. So this is actually Baylor running it. Um, similar idea, three safeties. Okay. Uh, here they're probably playing one of their Tampa variations. Okay. Uh, exact same structure. You're going to get the end going to play inside. You're going to get the nose to lag off the center. And then you'll see the challenge it creates here. So they're trying to run, it looks like at least a little bit of a wider zone. And the four eye on the backside doesn't take a great angle, but you'll see, especially when we get to the tight, the challenge for this backside offensive tackle. Okay. The, the guard's got to go like crazy to try and help with the, the center up to the mic. Okay. And that creates a great opportunity for this four eye to get in the backfield and make this play. Quarterback pulls it. Now I would, I would tell, you know, make sure that we're flat enough here. Right, we don't run by this. Quarterback pulls it, and our outside backer has the quarterback. Again, we'll get into you know if you're getting more downfield RPOs, and you want you don't want this player in the fit at all, okay. But as a base rule, you could play it this way, right? You have your outside linebacker for the quarterback. It's also great for you know again mobile quarterbacks. If you don't want if you don't want your defensive ends on the quarterback on the pull, right, this is a great way to get them out of that situation. Here, Baylor does it a little differently with the nose and the mic. I've heard this called a lead where they actually stunt the nose one way. If, if these two are looking at, you know, hey, we're going to work really hard to try and reach this nose where you can stunt the nose the other way. And sometimes you get the mic in the backside. But watch number nine here. Play the B gap to the field. You'll see number two. Play the C gap from depth. If this ball gets given, 93 should eat it for lunch. 38 has a quarterback. Okay, almost an identical clip. Again, you'll see how far, you know, and you see why they're doing it here. So we've got downfield RPO on this side, and we got pre-snap RPO on this side. So what are the, what's the offense looking for? If this guy's in the fit, they're going to block up the low player, and they're going to, you know, create an Oklahoma drill on the outside with that safety, right? That's what they're looking to do. So we get three on two. There's no way the quarterback's throwing that, right? Well, now looking at the backside, running zone read. Looks like these receivers are just blocking on the backside if it gets pulled. Well, now yeah. you, got two, you got two low players, right? You got your wall player and your mm -hmm. flat player. And this guy's already out of the box. So he can just sit and hang and then play the quarterback. Again, you see if the ball gets given, the four eyes going to eat it for lunch. Frustra frustrating from an offensive perspective. Absolutely. Now, they missed the tackle there. Um, but, you know, you see the way the fit's supposed to fit up. Again, you'll see how far the field backer comes from out of the frame here to end up still in the fit. We got a question here, Coach, too. Yep. Uh, from Coach Adrian. Yeah. Do you recommend this for a varsity high school team with many first-time players? Um, you know what? Especially because that's a, a question coming out of Ontario. Wait until I – I'll answer it more in-depthly when I talk about how the CFL is using the tight front because I think there's, sim there, there's certainly, you know, like any – any college offense is going to be – our college defense is going to be a challenge for, you know, raw new high school players. Um, I think there's certainly – depending on what you see. So if you see a bunch of, like, two back or double tight end, I probably wouldn't. If you see a bunch of spread, um, there, you know, as we keep going – let me – that's a great question. I think you can. It's just what pieces of the defense do you want to use? And how many of the tools in the defensive tool belt would you want to use? I think if you have a lot of tweeners, if you've got a lot of, you know, hockey, rugby, basketball, baseball players, um, you know, I think this system gives them roles that they can handle. Uh, if you don't have a lot of linemen, um, you know, there's probably a, a, some simpler versions of the 30 stack, especially if you don't defend any RPOs that you could play. Um, 
but I think put to this way, I intend on using this with high school players in summer football. I wouldn't use the entire Iowa state playbook obviously. Um, but we'll do pieces of it and, and we're going to get to some of the Canadian context specific stuff as we go. Um, yeah. Ag agree. Coach Horn. It's, it's, it's all about how much you want to use. So for example, I would use this, but I would probably play more just pure tight front. And so if this, like, for example, if this defensive end, if you don't think your defensive end can, can do the heavy technique, then I just kick him into the B gap. Right. And in terms of the pass rush, I just say, Hey, we've got, you know, we've got three defensive linemen. You're free to rush the passer. However you want the mic has the quarterback. Um, now in Canada, there's some things about, obviously with motion and the different formations that present some challenges, but uh, let, that's a great question. I would say you can, uh, it's just, which pieces do you, do you want to use the most um, would be, would be my, my take from that. And I would say you probably want to be in more tight front um, than having them execute the heavy five, although you could do it. And I would just keep your coverages really simple. I would play quarters behind it. Um, I would play quarters and man behind it for the most part. Um, but we'll get more into that with the, the CFL question, but it's a great question, coach. Um, what do you think is the best defensive coverage right now in college football? Um, I mean, I think being able to play it down in distance is a, is a big contributing factor to my decision. Cause there's some things I think on first down that let you do some stuff that, is hard to do on, you know, I wouldn't necessarily want on third down. And there's some stuff I love on third down. I wouldn't necessarily want on first down. If you're seeing 10 personnel, like I think, you know, handling 22, there's a lot of good answers. Three by one playing, um, you know, again, what, what coach Vass on make a defense great again, calls stubby mini lock key, a um, bunch of different names. Uh, but what we call up in Canada, try lock um, where you're going to kind of play palms on two and three and man on number one. Um, I, I would say that that's, that's my favorite on second long like with option routes. You just need to have leverage of the sticks. Um, and uh, th that would be my answer. That's a good question. Coach Ronald. Um, we'll keep going uh, with this, but those are great questions. Keep them coming guys. And sorry, Adrian, it feels like a bit of a cop-out answer. Um, Cause I want to tell you everything I do for a high school team, but uh, maybe, maybe that, maybe that'll be the next one. We'll do running this in high school. Like the, the complicated thing isn't like the front structure um the the complicated thing isn't the front structure it's what coverages you choose to play so i would i would say i'd play quarters uh and i'd put the the star on the back um and i get good at that first but absolutely i agree with coach one i think you can do it uh running back tips uh coach uh yeah um a, a bunch um a bunch that don't totally fit in with this presentation but uh make your make your drills realistic don't don't just run the ladder. Even even when they're super raw high school kids, you can get much more out of you know doing some footwork drills that show up in a game. Doing some footwork drills with a realistic mesh. Doing some footwork drills with some sort of visual stimuli to work on another skill. Um, and uh, don't switch hands with the ball. But that's that's a soapbox for another day for me. That's that's like my I I never taught that. Gonna, don't get them going on it. Don't get yeah. <laughs> it's a long conversation. Um, yeah. Lavondre Gordon at Laurier, Wolf of Laurier University, ran for a free how many yards? Three thousand, at least three thousand. His career never switched hands once, so it'll work out fine. Um, that'd be my thing. Realistic drills, ball security. I don't, I don't teach switching the which switching hands, um, and uh, work as many read drills as you can into what you do with your agility because being able to change directions only good when you know how to do it. Th those would be my. But we should we have an episode on on running back fundamentals, um, which maybe I'll drop. I'll put it in the chat here. Uh, drop it in the chat because that that has kind of my own. That was my kind of manifesto on on running back stuff. And there's probably some stuff I've forgotten that's good that's in there. So you see how tough it is for the offensive line with the heavy technique from from number three. Um, and again, you've got you've got the the backside linebacker in a great position there. So again, here, seeing the five tech away from uh, away from the back. 
Here they're in a little bit of a different coverage structure. Show it from the tight. But again, you can really see the lag. What's it actually plays here? I had all these annotated for our players. You can really see the lag, the nose play behind the center. Okay, they try and pin and fold for the mic here. But ultimately, again, the edge gets set. Nowhere for the back to go. Same one. Okay, so what if we don't get inside zone? Basically, we've been showing inside and outside zone the whole time here. We'll show one more because this is kind of the the what I call that fix it um, adjustment or basically having your star play the quarterback. So here they're going to RPO. Okay. So they got super wide split. They're going to RPO. They're going to try and crease this in behind. Right. Again, you look at this picture, you kind of got to blink and go, wait, who's covering these gaps. So this is actually a one back power RPO. Okay. Um, but it shows a lot of really good things. So here's, here's our, are three on two in the boundary. We're in great shape. Okay. They're going to throw a quick game here. We're all over it. Quarterback has to give the ball, right? There's no grass out there to, to throw the RPO into. Okay. You'll see the star coming down. If the quarterback pulled it, the star has got him. Okay. And then you'll see the field backer and the mic fitting this power on the front side. Now, I, I honestly don't like the 12 gets his nose in here on the front side. I'd like him to make sure, you know, really, like you tell your defensive end, make sure this guy doesn't have it on the boot. Okay. You see it here. Now we're just getting a pull, right? So our mic's going to play over the top. His gap's gone. Nose is still fitting backside of the center. The puller ends up inside here. So 23 should go inside of it. 50 should go outside of it. And then the field backer should fit in on the edge. Shows up right there. Again, a little hair late. I'd like him there a little earlier. And I'd honestly like him there a little later. Okay. But he's away from the fit. He should be able to get there a little bit earlier. Again, this is more just to show the lag. Again, the ball getting knocked off the table. We've seen enough inside zone, but Coach Horn's a big tight front fan, so we'll get him some good tight front clips. Uh, here we go. This is three by one. Okay, three by one. So this is three by one with the corner playing trap. So I'll show the two versions here of how they defend three by one. So the ball's going in the boundary. Okay. We see our four on three here. Great. We're good. We're going to hang, hang, hang on the RPO. Okay. Here, this guy is totally out of the fit. We've got our, our mic and our boundary backer. And then the corner is going to be the edge fitter. Now, again, you know, for my friends watching in Ontario or anyone watching in Canada, we might have to do that with the halfback. Or, you know, we might not be able to do that in general because um, the field's so big, but it is something that they do. So you see it a little, looks a little bit different here. Here's the mic. Here's the boundary backer. Because they're saying the corner is going to be the C-gap player, the boundary backer can play the, the uh, A-gap away from the back, still going to heavy five. The mic becomes your quarterback player and your corner becomes your edge fitter. The other way to do this is to have an A to C player. And this is the way, from what I understand, it's supposed to be played because you don't want to have to obviously have your corner and run support. Um, so you're going to play tight. Here's your field backer. There's your four on three. Okay hanging on the RPO. Here's your nest or quarterback player. Okay. Uh, and then this backer is going to play A to C. And if you watched our, our show with Robbie Smith a couple weeks ago, he talked about a rodent stunt where the end would, the end would go C to A. Uh, here that middle linebacker is going to go A to C. So 
we might expect some late help from the corner. And this is this is tough or the safety, depending on, you know, how you want to fit it, what coverage you're playing. But you're going to watch here, this linebacker, once the ball declares past the A gap, he's going to run over the top and become the C gap player. So he's playing the A gap, the A gap has gone, bang, over the top. Safety shows up first, but still in position to make that tackle. Now, if you're really getting RPO'd, this is worth it. If you're not getting full field RPO'd, uh, you know, Coach Adrian talking about this, this would be the last thing I try and teach somebody who's new to football. Okay, this, this is definitely a challenge. Um, but basically, leg, B gap, B gap, quarterback player, and then your backer away from the running back is going to go A to C. And the way I've heard it taught is that no running back worth his salt is going to run into the B gap when the mic steps up, right? Especially when you got this nose, they're going to run to the open space. So the mic will play over the top. So there's get your toes in the A gap, right? Ball carrier declares away. We'll play over the top. So that's little trips run fit there. Um, and then we'll get into let's get into some counter clips here. Okay. The other big thing people are doing is they're trying to, you know, get a lot of pullers against this stuff because you can get some angles on the down guys and, and it becomes a little harder. Um, but here's a good example of how they fit counter. I'll play the tight. It's better out of the tight. So if they're going to pull two players, you got to get the star involved. Okay. And, and this is, you know, if you get a team that's going to run spread counter um, against this, you probably need to be able to fit it this way or somebody's got a two gap. Okay. But we're going to get this five technique is getting the puller. They've got to chase the B gap. This thing has to, has to, has to cut back. Now, obviously that's what the pullers are going. Okay. But if this, this cannot get vertical, we got to try our best to play inside of this um, and let this player play the C gap. Now here, he runs over the top. If you wanted to do it that way, you could as well. To me, it's a long way to go. I would rather tell this end, hey, if this guy pulls, go with him. Make this back block really hard for who's ever blocking back. Center steps this way. So where's the nose go? Lags. Okay, the puller pulls the mic with him. So you see we're B gap, A gap. Really, we got to go cancel this A gap. There's only two gaps left. So we've got, you know, if this became bootleg, it's for the backer. And then the way this should fit up is we're going to set the edge from depth. We're going to spill this second puller and the star is going to fit the counter which is basically how it fits up here. We get the same deal here. Again, if you want to pull and throw, like this guy could hold a little longer, right? We want to, you know, we want to make sure that this is an RPO. But again, that star backer ends up fitting up the extra stop. Yeah, agreed coach, agreed coach Horn. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a doable job, that A to C. You just want to make sure you got – if the back is faster than the linebacker, you know, those, those Georgia guys can run pretty good. Um, but, you know, that that's – it's a challenging part of it. Um, but if, if your Mike is your best player in high school, right, like that that can be, you know, a strength in some ways too, I guess. So, um, for me, I'd prefer to not have to play A to C. Um, and and I pref I'd prefer – um, you know, to have uh, a bit of a better edge presence um, than that player coming out of the A gap. Uh, but, you know, this is talking about how they do it. We'll talk about kind of how I would do it in the Canadian context coming up in a bit. Um, so here again, you see you get the two pullers. We need three hats to the party, spill it, set the edge, 12 is going to fill it. If you've got a really, really good player at the star, your defense is going to be good is what we want.
Uh, why not? Let's do power read. Last one, and again, this isn't necessarily three safety. It's just more so tight front. Okay, but if we get the power read, so we're getting the back horizontal, and they're going to read this edge player. Okay, so we should get the quarterback keeping it. You're going to get some kind of down block and pull. If this gets given, six is all over it. If the quarterback keeps it, eight's got it. Bang, power read. Okay, so again, I, I more of a focus on the run fits because I think you have more options with the coverages, right? You're able to, um, you know, whether you want to play cover three, cover four, split safety coverages. Um, out of this look, you can do a lot, especially if your third safety can really cover. You can get really creative and and do different things if you want to drop eight. All that stuff um, is available to you. Uh, and if I can just go back to my my slideshow here, if I don't delete anything. Um, I think to me, the most valuable piece is the defending RPOs. So we're going to switch to, you know, CFL film breakdown here in a minute, uh, where we're going to talk about tight front. And then uh, after I talk about what they're doing in the CFL, the tight front, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I would use the tight front and this, this three safety structure in the Canadian game. Um, and, and it's, you know, something I'm really excited for. And I, and I think it's going to be really beneficial, excited to share with some coaches on here and excited, honestly, to hear some coaches feedback because this has been something I've been working on for two years and I've yet to have a chance to actually run it. Um, you know, so it's been a learning from everywhere from, you know, getting, getting my hands on, on this film to, uh, to, to watch and CFL stuff. Um, it's been a fun project for me. Um, and I'm excited to share it, but to me, the, the benefit here is the third safety being able to roll down and be your quarterback player and get you out of RPOs. Right, this forces teams if they want to run RPOs, they have to run them out of pistol. Um, you can do some stuff out of two back, and that'll be another presentation we'll do later on this summer. I think Braden is talking about this stuff into two back, um, and we'll touch on it a little bit with, with our next presentation, actually. But um, having that star become your quarterback player in ten personnel when you want them to is probably my favorite aspect, you know, of, of this defense. And we'll, we'll probably do an episode here, Braden, where you can break down exactly offensively what you guys would be doing to, to make all of this stuff useless. Um, but th this would be one thing. If you're an offensive coordinator, um, this is, this is going to start to become more popular, especially as you become more RPO and, and pass game oriented, which many people already are. Um, so any final thoughts on that one, Braden, while I dial up uh, what we're going to talk about next? No, I'm, I'm excited, coaches. If you guys have, you know, thoughts or anything you want me to touch on for the offensive side of this, um, put them in the comments section. I'll be working on this because I know I'm going to be seeing it uh, as we get back on the field here very shortly. Um, so if you guys have questions, thoughts, comments, um, let me know. Awesome. Um, so we're, we're going to kind of switch uh, – we're going to kind of switch, um, you know, gears here and uh, for, and I know the, the majority of our, of our following is, is Canadian coaches. So we're going to get more into the three down stuff. Um, I just thought from, you know, it's, it's kind of a, it's a very different structure. And so I didn't want to talk about it without, you know, kind of giving some background into what, where it's coming from. Um, and so we're going to get into how some Canadian teams are, are using the tight front, um, which is obviously part of the system we just talked about with the three high safety stuff. Um, but a little bit different, I would say. And one of the challenges you get to Canada and the, the, the motion and, you know, the, the different situations you're in based on teams having, you know, formations that might have three receivers and a fullback or three receivers and a tight end. Um, and it can make some of what I just showed uh, you know, certainly you have to make some changes to it. Um, so this is, this isn't necessarily a all encompassing look at, at everything teams are doing out of the tight front. I have filmed from, I think about four teams. Um, but you know, it, it shows that, you know, the game is so fluid and, and I think this is going to be something that, you know, coming out of, you know, this year off, I'm excited to see, you know, CFL defenses as RPOs, as the, as the arms race continues you know, to, to see what CFL teams are doing. And I think part of the tight front 
um, the beauty of the tight front is going to help on our big field, you know, with RPOs and quick game, right? Which is kind of, I think, becoming, you know, the, the, the happy place for Canadian offense, right? Is the RPO and the quick game. It's simple. It's easy. It's quarterback friendly. It, it's versatile. It's, it's, it's not scheme dependent. So you can run a variety of run schemes with different RPOs. You can run a variety of pass schemes, different RPOs. You're going to see those same challenges. So um, again, keep the good questions coming. And honestly, when we get to the part where I'm, you know, kind of pitching what my thoughts are, where what, what some teams could look to do with this, um, you know, I, I'm interested to hear people's comments on there as well. So without further ado, I'm going to get into that uh, right now. So again, tight front, we already talked about it. If, if anyone's joining us new, please like, uh, please like the video. Um, you know, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe. Um, and uh, if you throw a comment in the chat, it helps more people find the video. So even if it's, you know, even if it's just where you're watching from, um, you know, the more activity we have on the stream, the more YouTube will toss it out to people. Um, so, you know, we've already talked about the tight front. Uh, one of the big differences you're going to see is I would say most, um, most teams I saw in the CFL are, are usually using the tight front instead of the back front. So they're not going to have the five technique away from the back. Um, you'll see that the outside linebackers are a little tighter and that's because really they're not playing the three high safeties. I saw a lot of one high or safety or, you know, some rock and roll between the safety and the Sam. Uh, so that's one big difference, but you know, they're really using it for the same reason and that's to really affect the zone run game. So, you know, here's a good example. We've got an RPO um, and here, you know, one by four in the Canadian game, usually you're trying to correct me if I'm wrong here, Braden, but you're hoping you get one-on-one -on -one out here, right? And if you don't get one-on-one -on -one out there, you should get one of two things, either numbers in the boundary or numbers in the box. Um, and, and here, you know, clearly most teams don't want to give up one-on-one -on -one to the field corner. There's just too much space in the Canadian game. Um, doesn't, uh, doesn't matter how good that corner is. That's a tough job. Um, and, and so teams will do stuff like this and where the tight front can help you is now your C gap player is also your low wall player where normally you'd be in the B gap or the A gap, making it a little tougher, um, making it a little more challenging to get out into that RPO. A couple of, a couple of coaches there dropping in the chat. Appreciate it. Uh, Coach Breon from Pennsylvania. There we go. Um, getting, getting some American following going. We appreciate it. Uh, uh, Coach Scott for, uh, just installed the tight front earlier today. I hope it's good. Yeah, it's, it, I'm hoping it's going to be good to us. Um, this summer, we're excited about it. Um, so you can play the six gaps in the box with taking some of the conflict off of this outside linebacker. So you'll see here, they're looking at this going, okay, we're two on one, two on one of the field. We don't like that matchup. We've got six box players. So we think we have a four on three out here. So they're going to try and throw the quick bubble screen. And you just see that this linebacker that is, is C gap responsible how quick they can get to that perimeter screen. Now you might be saying, you know, Hey, we're a high school team. We're not seeing full field RPOs. What's the value of this to us? To me, it's the quick pass game, right? Your linebackers have so much more width, right? I think one of the scariest things to me is as a coach is when I'm watching my will linebacker trying to drop to that hook to curl and their heads going back and forth and they're all over the place. And you're like, there's no way they're going to pick up this thing. Right. And being already out there simplifies their job and lets them be more aggressive um, as opposed to kind of chasing to get out there. Um, and, and so that to me is, is a huge advantage. We'll let this play through. I think I got the tight on this one. Oh, I think I might must have it on that. A couple more coming up. So similar idea here. Here we just get another form of RPO. So here we're reading the will linebacker. So this is like RPO. I feel like in Canada one-on-one -on -one right now, right? If you're in three by two, you're going to try and read the will linebacker. Um, and you know, if the will linebacker doesn't drop, usually you're going to have one player in the flat, um, whether it's the corner or the half, and you're going to throw a quick game and whichever, whichever DB's off, you're going to throw it to that receiver. Um, so you get just a double stop concept here, right? But you can see the will is able to hang on that RPO. Now this ball gets completed. Uh, I think this is second and 10. Um, so the corner is giving up a little bit of room. Okay. But you see here with the three on two, how you could be really aggressive if it was a shorter down and distance from this corner spot. 
So the ball gets thrown again, second and 10. We, no need to dive on this right away. We see it thrown. Now we can go get it. And again, the advantage of that is typically this will linebackers in the box. So you're going to get a much easier completion on this inside hook. Here, the quarterback has to actually throw the outside hook by the time the ball's there, tackled, punt, change of possession. So again, you see that we talked about, okay, why the difference is zero, four I. Um, you know, why do we play between a four I and a three? A lot of teams like the three technique to the side of the back because it forces the tackle to go even farther, right? So it's really, really tough for the backside tackle because, again, if this guard hesitates at all, this nose and mic, there's no way the center is going to be able to deal with it, right? So this guard has to go like crazy, and that's where we see if we're in a three-tech, we can really get in the hip pocket, right, of, uh, of this guard. So you see here, again, the quarterback – visioning here he's reading 25 right 25 is right in that window okay this really should be a give um but we're forcing the ball to be thrown underneath uh coach horn love the type run against outside zone of the boundary great angles to the will tough reach for the guard 100 percent, 100 percent, 100 percent. totally agree coach it's 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 really solid against zone run game overall um so You'll see here, um, if this ball got given, the guard stayed backside, right? There's going to be no one left to block the mic. And again, you're, you know, instead of that ball getting caught in space and getting up the field, you, you've got really good leverage on it. Okay, so here's a look at Hamilton. Um, and you know, here's a this is one of the challenges with the tight front again. You're seeing mostly single high, so you're seeing the difference. You know, here's your here's your Sam backer. Um, you know, here they have a tight end in the boundary as well as the X. So your boundary corners on one, your boundary halves relating to the tight end. Your outside, you could have this linebacker play inside or outside the tight end, that'd be up to you. Um, one of the things that Hamilton does here, uh, that I really like is you get a good example of a little stunt between the nose and the three tech. Um, again, just really creates some challenges. You see that the running back does a nice job cutting this back, actually. Pretty well executed. But you see with the zone, you know, if, if this zone were to work front side, it's really tough with that stunt um, to be able to play it, uh, to be able to get a body on a body up front. We'll see it well from the tight here. Again, 23 is going to play the C-gap from depth. So we're able to play in the RPO window first, then get to the football. Okay, again, you see here the stunt really takes away that cutback. 22's in a decent position, um, you know, with, with this player coming across, however they want to play it. Somebody's got to add in, and that's why they end up a gap short, right? I think 24 should probably be in here. Okay, but again, it's tough with the stunt, right? We see 97's able to get off the block, get in on the play. Okay, if you're running zone into this stuff, it's just really, really challenging. So here's an example. If we're talking about, okay, how do I want to play this, you know, simply as a high school coach? Actually, I think I have a better clip coming up. I'll, uh, I'm not sure if Coach Adrian's still with us, but I'll, I'll kind of answer his question here. So, and this is another one where it's more about the concept. It's not perfect. So here we get four by one outside zone in the boundary, exactly what Coach Horn's talking about. Okay, and then they've got a little bubble screen RPO here. So you see, this would be the corner, the halfback. Uh, this is actually the Sam who's playing outside number three. Um, free safety who's playing inside number four. Okay, and then you got your field backer. That gives you your five on four to play whatever zone coverages you want. Um, I would play quarters, however you like to play quarters with cut, hold. Um, I would wanna have four deep, um, especially in the Canadian field. And then our boundary half, okay, can double with the X um, or, you know, can play poach if you want, however you want to do it. But ultimately, what I like about this is we're able to get numbers to the perimeter and force them to pound the ball inside. And then you can have, you know, your fire zone pressures, whatever your blitzes are um, that deal with that. So we'll, we'll get to that, you know, close to the end. We start talking about pressures, but 
to me, we're going to solve the problems of we need people in space for the quick pass game, RPO game, perimeter run game. And then we're going to bring bodies to the box because I think that's easier the way the game's played now than starting with bodies in the box and trying to get them out to the perimeter, right? I want to secure the perimeter first and then bring bodies back to the box. Um, so this would be a really easy example. You know, you could play like your classic cover four, right? Uh, with a cut and carry corner here. Um, and then your mic is your fourth rusher. Okay. And then, uh, you know, in this case, your, your boundary backer is going to have the back, right? Cause there's no two receiver for him to take. If there was, if this formation was flipped, your field linebacker would have the back. So the will doesn't take a great angle here. The will drops. There's no need for him to drop right now. Uh, if that, if that will is coming to set the edge, right? The five technique actually does it, or the four eye technique does a good job of getting up the field. It's really tough for teams to block your mic. That's the thing I love about this in high school is especially if you're running any kind of stunts here, they whip 11 inside. So 53 should probably be on his horse a little bit more. Okay. But it's just really hard to get a body to the mic. Okay, here, here's an important concept. So I'm gonna draw a few things up, um, actually at a 32, I'm gonna go back to one of those first clubs. Perfect, okay. So we'll get to some playbook stuff, but I always find I do the playbook stuff first and then I shortchange the film. So I thought I'd flip it around this time and, and watch the film and shortchange the playbook stuff. Uh, feel free to give me your feedback on whether you like that better or worse. We can, we can figure that out. But if we've got three by two and you want to run some sort of three, three tight front, um, the simplest way is not to do the three safety stuff. I think you can do some three safety stuff, but the simplest way would be to play with your traditional free safety, right? Whatever coverages you, you like to coach. If you're a cover three team, great play cover three. If you're a cover four team, which would be my personal preference, especially as you get to senior high school with more developed passing games. Okay. I would be playing, if we have two receivers, I'd be playing cut to that side and carrying the corner. If we get a vertical that lets the free safety play the field side. Okay. And I would play, if we have three receivers, I'd be playing hold meaning the half is down. Okay. The corner's up. And again, I got my four on three, the Sam's the wall player. Again, the CFL, your linebackers get pretty deep. Your Sam doesn't need to be it. 10 yards, okay, your Sam can be a little lower than that in a high school game, okay? Helps with run support. So from there, okay, now you're gonna blitz one of these linebackers. If you wanna always make it the mic, you can just say, hey, the, the, the inside linebacker, um, the inside linebacker that's, uh, that's to, the, to the field in three by two could have the running back because you need this guy to play the boundary. Okay, if it's 23, you just flip it. So if they go, if they bring this receiver over here, okay, now um, now it's probably easier if you're always bringing him to drop this player this way because you still have three over here, okay? Or you could bring the free safety uh, over with number three and that, you know, get your four on three that way. Actually, that's probably easier. I take that back. Have your Sam go high, free safety come over. That way you can still always drop these guys to their side. The other thing is you can do more drop nine stuff, which is which is easier if you're trying to cover the pass game. So when you get four by one, I got a couple of three by twos as well. When you get four by one, one of the really common tools people use is a share rush. So if you look at this, this is pretty similar to picture to what we've seen. These backers are moved up a little bit, but if you already have two on one, there's no real need to also drop the boundary backer, right? You've already got two on one. So if you want to, you can, you know, rotate the coverage to the field and drop this guy underneath. That's a little more complicated. I would say consistently, I'd want to play two on one. If that's their best receiver, force them to throw to somebody they don't feel like throwing to over here. That would be my advice. Now over here, I got my free safety. 
I got my field corner. I got my field halfback. I got my Sam linebacker and I got my field backer. Okay. So I've got my five on four. Here's the fourth receiver running the bubble from the opposite side. Most lots of teams will run. If you don't have a number two receiver, you're going to blitz the back. What I would do, and we'll talk about this more, and is I would bring all five guys. So I would say, hey, you've got the quarterback, okay, still as a delayed rusher, okay, and but now we're just going to bring the boundary backer. If the back releases outside, we'll peel and take it. If the back releases inside, like he does here, now the mic can take the running back and this guy can rush the quarterback. So that's exactly what happens here. And they happen to be running screen. And you see how they trade it off. So if this back ran a swing route, this guy would peel out with it. And now he's our fourth rusher because he steps up. We can rush the edge. And now the Mike has the back. They're running screen. Mike takes the back actually ends up being a pick. And I think he gets caught. So I didn't play the whole thing. So you see it here. So 21 is going to blitz. If three, 33 releases, he'll take them. If 33 steps up, then 22 will take them. So that's a tool that a lot of teams use when you get like four by one or three by one, because you don't need a halfback, a linebacker, and a corner drop in a one guy. So again, here's four by one. They're going to play bracket or double the boundary wide out and bring the boundary end. Another common thing you can do on the backside is if you can have the safety watch the release of number one. So if number one releases outside, right? If they run outside, what are they running? Come back or fade, right? There's nothing else they can run. If they wanted to run a post dig slant, they'd release inside. So you can just say, hey, that's the corner's job. He's got to run that because you're not going to be able to help on the comeback or help on the fade anyway, right? And then you can switch your eyes to the field. So you see that really clearly here, right? He's playing square so he can help out on a post dig from this side. When he gets outside of release, snaps his eyes to the field. So again, you see the benefit here of having this linebacker out of the box. So this would be your field halfback, your Sam, your free safety your field corner, here's your field backer. Again, they throw a little bubble screen here. Traditionally, this Mike linebacker is still right here, right? And now this is a problem. Whereas now able to get out, make a play in space. So I'd say that's been the biggest use of the tight front for CFL teams is defending quick game it's great defending rpo it's great defending the screen game it's great um and, and we'll get into some pressures and stuff uh and so some of my thoughts on things you could add to it as well a couple more clips here so here's an example instead of blitzing most cfl teams i would say they don't uh they don't rush the mic they'll rush one or both of the edge players um and let the mic cover so again, here, instead of, instead of this being your four on three, we're going to bring the Sam and drop the mic. Uh, coach Adrian, this is one of the things I love as a high school coach is your coverages and everything stay the same. It looks like you're blitzing, but you're just rushing four, right? That, that to me is the benefit of playing the 30. And I've had, I've been around so many, you know, good quarterbacks who struggle to read pressures against thirties. Cause they're like, coach, they brought two linebackers. I, I have to be hot. Well, it's like two linebackers is only a five man pressure, right? We've got six in the block. We should be good. Um, so that, that's a big factor as well in why I like it. Um, you just got to have a system for how do your coverages rotate? So for example, if you're going to blitz your field backer, okay. Then your, your safety probably needs to drop to the field side. Again, it depends where you're playing. If you're playing cover three, it can stay the same. That, that's actually what they're playing here. Okay, so if you're going to bring the field backer, now your mic has to replace um, and get you that four on three you want to the field. Let 
The other thing is it can create one-on-ones inside. I think sometimes um, coaches overvalue edge rush one-on-ones. Um, obviously, if you have a great edge rush, that's awesome. But being able to rush interior gaps with one-on-ones, like see the, the one-on-one we get with the center and the guard. Um, some teams will even play this with two, three techs so that they get the one-on-one on the guard, uh, on the center and on the guards. Okay. And you can do a lot of great pressure stuff out of this where if, if you're showing – you know, a, a five up front, usually you're going to get the tackles widening. And now you get your three one-on-ones on the inside, um, you know, which I know most D-line coaches probably be pretty excited about. And if you're getting that, you can do a lot of, like I talked about, running those kind of simple stunts where are they're really tough to defend, um, you know, whether it's, you know, just a one-side stunt or you get all three involved on the interior, um, you can really create some issues. So here, uh, Nichols gets the ball out, which which sucks for Hamilton because this is great pass rush by the by the nose, right? That should end in a better result, but you know you see the look they're trying to get. So here would just be you know an example of you're playing cover one. Um, they're disguising it a bit. I think the boundary half is locked on the tight end. Okay. Um, but you can play it where you track with receivers or you rotate. So for example, if, you know, the three receiver crosses the set here, you could have your Sam track it, or you could have, you know, your free safety rotate to it and your Sam rotate high kind of just depends on your personnel. But again, it's not just good against spread here. It is against two backs. So we got a tight end in the boundary. Usually you want your edge player to stay the edge player. Okay, our boundary half is going to have to add in because they're adding a blocker. We need to add a defender. They add a second blocker here. Okay, and, and zero is able to come over the top and, and close this thing out. So again, if you're getting additional blockers, you need to have a system for how you're going to add players in. One of the big mistakes I see defenses make is, you know, we'll get, like this was pants lock for us, uh, Braden at Laurier. Um, and we would bring that player across and no one would match it. And so we get, we get an extra body, right? So however you're playing this again, whether number two is going to rotate down or, and the Sam goes high or the Sam tracks, right? We're going to cancel the interior four gaps here, right? We're going to set the edges here. If they add players, you have to have a system for how you want your players to add. Um, but again, there's lots of options for you there. It really makes running run the zone tough. So here's a look at 23. Okay, and you kind of get a little bit of a rotation. So this is the Sam coming high, free safety into the boundary. And again, your field, your mic, and your boundary backer. So this is a pretty common look, just gonna get split zone. Okay, your, your field backer is gonna probably set the edge. Actually, I, I can't run this clip if he sets it or he spills it. It ends up going up inside. But again, you gotta have, you, you'll see 23 rotate with the cross. Let me put that back. As three comes across, you'll see 23 goes high and now the Sam is going to have to come down back down into the fit as if it was 32. So I'm not hundred percent sure on how they would want this played, but I'm not sure why they'd want the end to go back outside unless 31 was coming underneath, which I don't see happen. So I think that this might be a bust from nine. Because what we should see is as this, as the guard steps down, that's where nine should be taking that space. But again, it's just so hard to get to the mic, right? So it's kind of like the old bear. It's kind of like the 50, you know, old school 50 defense, just with an answer for quick game pass. Okay. Um, so that's, you know, some clips, how it's being used right now, predominantly to defend spread quick game RPOs. Um, but it also fits, you know, again, we showed a couple of examples of adding blockers in there um, and, and it fits if you're getting add-ins as well. You just have to have a system for how you handle that. So I think I'm going to make an executive decision here, Braden. 
and I'm going to draw some of this. Um, some of the, uh, I'll, I'll do it off our just my display for now. Um, you got my screen still there? Yes, sir. We do. Awesome. So let's let's talk about okay. How would I run this? Uh, the three safety stuff combined with the tight front stuff we're seeing in the CFL. How could we run this in in Canada against you know the the offenses that we're going to see against spread passing games, all that good stuff? Okay. Um, I'm going to exit this one. Let's have another one ready to go. Okay. So this would be a base look. What time we got? 29 minutes. Perfect. So this would be kind of my setup for a three high safety defense in Canada um, against the formations we're going to see. Again, the number one thing um, that I would suggest is you defend what you're going to see. So some of this is based on, you know, me as a, as a coach in summer football, the offenses we're going to see with my summer program, right? The level of quarterbacks traditionally, the, the types of offenses we see traditionally, the skill sets of players we traditionally have. Um, why do I want to switch this type of defense? Like most teams, it's hard to find enough really talented linemen, and it's even harder to keep them all healthy. Um, so I would rather... I would rather have a rotation going with three starting linemen um, and, and play more players uh, and get more players on the field and even use at times a, a D end of this, sorry, this mic spot um, and, and go from there. This base drawing is how most teams are doing it in the CFL. So you're going to have your X linebacker um, down or your Sam linebacker. We call him the X on relating to number three. Okay, if number three ends up in the boundary, usually you're going to see some kind of rotation where your field, your halfback's going to go down, your free safety is going to come over, and your your Sam or your X is going to come up. Okay, and that's how you get back to your four high structure. Okay, so that's what I'm seeing most of the time in CFL. Uh, I think it, it serves a lot of good purposes. Uh, totally solid way to do it. Um, it's it to me. Uh, it's great against quick game. It, it's great against the RPOs. It, it gives you a lot of coverage options, and it's not super different from your base defense. This is one suggestion that I would have for Canadian coaches. Look at doing this out of a three safety structure. Now, to do that, you're going to have to make some changes. So, base rules. I'm gonna. I messed up my drawing here. I'm gonna get my my stuff back in order. I'm just going to talk about playing base quarters um, and, and uh, maybe we'll build on this and do some more if, if people are really interested in this. Okay. About some of the other different coverages I would play, uh, but we're going to talk about base quarters for now. So if we have three, what we're going to do in terms of getting lined up, right? Job number one is let's get lined up correctly. Our corners are going to relate to the number one receivers. 99% of the time there's going to be a number one receiver to your side, unless you got totally unbalanced. So I'm not going to deal with that conversation here. Your corners are relating to number one. Your halfbacks are going to relate to number two. If there's no number two, that means you have a single receiver on your side. Um, then that, that DB is going to double the boundary, the, the, or double the wide out to their side. You could do a lot of things with it. I would do more different things, but as a base, I would want to man up the backside player. Okay. If there is a, a second receiver, okay, the halfback's going to relate to number two. If there's a third receiver, the free safety is going to relate to number three. Okay. So other than empty, that covers us on anything for now um, in terms of a base sense. So Right now, we've got three receivers to the field. If we have three receivers, I want to play hold. I want my half down, pushing two to one. My field backer can wall number three. Um, if, three goes, uh, if three goes out, he can push the two. Three goes vertical, he can push the two. With three receivers on the big Canadian field, I want to take away two in the seam. Um, we've talked about this called a lean technique on some other videos. Okay, Our corner has one and two vertical. Okay, if we get three verticals to this side, the free safety is going to take away the, the vertical from three. The field corner has got to be able to play two verticals. Lots of things you can do to help them out. 
Lots of things you can do in different coverages to change that. That is the hard part of playing base quarters, but that's what we're going to look at. Our, uh, if we have two receivers, like we do in the boundary, our boundary half is going to post, that should say number two. Okay, it's going to play the post or high wall number two, and we're going to play cut and carry to that side. How aggressive you are over there is totally up to you. Um, you can play true cut. You can play, um, you can play like cover four, play the corner off down distance. That's up to you. Your boundary backer has the same job except on number two instead of on number three. My mic has the quarterback. My X has the running back. Same as when we talked about the three high structure with, with Iowa State. Okay. If the back is to release to a certain side, let's put them, let's draw it in. It'd be better. Let's say the back releases to the flat. Our X is then going to push. So let's say we get this. If our, if our back goes to the flat, our boundary backer uh, is, is going to push to the back. And now the X can push and take over that responsibility. Okay, same thing to the field, just the switch occurs with the field backer. So that's like a bait from a base quarter standpoint. That's how we're going to get covered down and handle two receivers or three receivers. Like I said, if we have one receiver, we'll double it with the half back to that side. I got lines all over the place here, Brain. All right, there we go. Um, in terms of the front, plays out the same way we talked about with the tight front Iowa State stuff. Mike and Nose are going to lag. Okay, I would play it with – you could play it straight out of the tight. I would play it with the back front with the heavy five. So if we get run action, the, the, back, the end away from the back goes inside. If we get pass, the end away from the back – is going to rush the edge. Okay, so that would be my how I play, um, you know, base ace 32. Uh, well, what happens if they add a player? Okay, great question. What happens if, um, you know, if we if we get a crack block from the H right outside zone and they and they crack the defensive end? If they add a player, we're going to add a player. So we're going to stay, uh, we're going to play true leverage on our Sorry, I should have had that on the linebacker. We're going to play true leverage on everything. So that means is if we get a blocker from our outside shoulder, we can stay inside of it, right? We can stay inside of it and spill it. We can stay inside of it and spill it. Okay, our field half now has to be ready to play when that ball bounces. Okay, because again, they're adding the H. Right, we need to add an extra player uh, to cover that up. The other thing that I like about this is again, who has the running back? Who has the running back? The X has the running back. So if this is outside zone, the X has nothing else to do other than track that back. Because even if it's play action, he's got the back. So you're going to get an extra hitter to the football. That's the, my biggest thing I like about this defense. If you're not getting RPO'd, it's still super valuable because you get an extra fitter to the football with the X. Okay. Now, if you are going to get RPO'd, one of the things you can do is, again, take your X linebacker. I might even, yeah, I'll leave that there. And say, okay, say they're going to run your double stop out here with the RPO. You can leave the boundary backer out of the fit. Just make a call um, in and in, out, 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 whatever you want it to be. Okay. And then your X can replace uh, the C gap where that backer's out. So again, you got to call and tell the X, Hey, are you replacing the backer or are you free on the back? Um, but you have that freedom within this setup. Uh, so that would be kind of basics um, to 32. If we got 23, which is my other diagram, I'm going to hop out of this and hop into that one. If we got 23, what changes? Oh, this is just 32 again, Brayden. I thought I had 23 in here. If we get 23, um, our free safety, remember, travels with number three. So our free safety travels with number three. Because we have three receivers, we're going to play hold. So we're no longer playing cut. 
Now we're going to play cut on the two receiver side, which should be the opposite side. So now we're playing uh, push two to one from the half. Basically, the field and the boundary just switch. Our field. Now we're going to play cut to the field side. And again, how aggressive you are in the cut depends on down distance, you know, how you want your players to play that. Okay. But again, we're still three on two. I got a super wide split here. Still three on two with our field backer, our field half and our corner. Okay. And we're four on three in the boundary. And again, our X is going to relate to the running back. So base system wise, that would be where I would start. Um, what happens if you get four by one? Um, and again, you, you can have a lot of different ways to play this. And, you know, some of you might take something you already do and work this in again. It, it's not like this is the only way you can play it. My personal adjustment would be to play it very similar to the way Iowa state plays it. We're going to take our, so our free safety travels with number three. So our free safety is going to be high inside of three. Our X is going to be playing the vertical of number four. So if four wants to go deep, the X has it. If four wants to go underneath, the field backer can take it. And again, we don't have a number two receiver. So our boundary halfback can now double the boundary wide out as a base. Again, as a base, I wouldn't, I would want more. One of the reasons I like this defense is you can play it more than one way, but as a base, I would want to erase this boundary wide out and then I would want to run that share rush in the boundary. So now remember our X is gone. Our X is on number four. So our X can't be responsible for the back. So now I want to share rush the back. Where we're going to have our boundary backer brush off the edge. Um, I would, I'm a big fan of five man pressures. Um, so I have a bunch that I would run off this. Um, but basically you could let your kids call on the field. You could call from the sideline. Hey, if you get four by one, you know, the simplest way um, is, you know, you just send the nose one of two ways, either to the back or away from the back or strong or weak. And then you're going to delay rush the mic opposite. So again, if the back wants to release to the side of the blitzing linebacker, they have it. So if this if this back releases, I don't know why I'm getting that. Whenever I hit that, it should be multiple line. Uh, if that if that back releases, then we're gonna get appeal from this edge rusher. Take it. Okay, and now again, we're going to get that fourth rusher uh, from Mike. If that back were to release the opposite way, see if I can get it like that. If that back were to release the opposite way, now the Mike will take it through the flat and we get the boundary rusher. Okay, so that would be kind of my base versus one back. If we get two back, I don't want to make this diagram too messy. Let's do this. If we get a quick back, question while we're still in 41 there. If you yeah. get 42 empty, what are your how what are your rules going to be for that uh, that buck backer, that boundary backer? So if it's out early, it just plays like it's three by two in the boundary. Okay. So now the mic has to have the quarterback out anywhere he goes. And this is where one of the biggest differences is you can teach. We have a little extra time, so maybe I'll show this, but you can teach your ends to contain through the, C, the B gap. It's again, it's something that is doable, but takes a little work. I would in high school just say, hey, you're the starting middle linebacker. You've got the quarterback out either way. And if I've got a really, if I've got a really athletic quarterback and I don't have a really athletic middle linebacker, then I will, then I will come up with some pressure stuff to try and contain the quarterback. That would be my base answer, especially when they go empty, right? If you go empty, make make them run the quarterback draw. We got two three techs and a nose, right? Mm -hmm. If you're running quarterback quarterback draw here, it's tough to get angles, right? Really, you need to run quarterback off tackle. And if you're going to run quarter, you know, not too many people are carrying quarterback off tackles through the offseason. 
And if someone wants to put it in for you, again, that's where your pressures and, and stuff, um, you know, hopefully your execution outweighs that schematic advantage that they try and gain right at the end. Um, so that would be my answer. So that'd be the base answer to 42 is you play the four like it's four and you play the two like it's two. Um, but if it's out early at all, like if, if it's not out of the backfield, then the buck will just take it, right? So for example, if, if you're playing like two on one here bracket and then, you know, we get the waggle up here and, and this player gets out here, you just check it to cut. Right. Or try lock if you want to play man match. And that's, if you've stayed here for the two hours, that's the, that's what I love out of this is being able to play try lock um, or play triangles three over two. So the last thing I want to talk about is pressuring out of this. Cause I love it as a base for quick game and RPOs. Cause it takes some of the stress off your linebackers in coverage, take some of the stress off your linebackers um, in the RPO game. What I like even more is your pressure options. So two, I'm going to give up some good stuff here. This is, this is good stuff that, you know, I, I think is, is game changers for you on defense um, that can be run at the high school level. Um, let's just go back to 32. So I'm going to clean my picture up here for a sec, Breda. Um, any other, your offensive brain as it's working through it here, you know, any other, where would you be trying to attack as an offensive player? Yeah. You know, for me immediately, you know, I'm trying as an offensive guy, I'm looking at meshes and unders and drive routes are the things that I would like to attack, um, you know, is get some, get some crossing routes in there is the main thing I want to attack here. Um, you know, it does a good job of, of, you know, the, the things that you want to do, your, your three over two and your four over three. So the big thing from an offense perspective in the Canadian field is that boundary and how big that is, is something I would look at a lot as well. Yeah. And, and that's where, you know, uh, that's where ultimately, um, you know, you've got to be able to be sound on the back end and, and depending on what you're getting coverage wise, um, you know, you, you want to be able to handle, like if you're going to get the under routes and stuff like that, like I would be playing split field coverage. So the mic isn't in the pass distribution. So like we've got a wall crossers, right. Uh, in, and which is obviously a challenge mesh, all that good stuff can be a bit of a challenge, but there's obviously other things you can do coverage wise um, as well in the endless battle of, uh, of the whiteboard here. So, but, but agreed, that's definitely something you're going to see from teams. So two things um, that I would do pressure wise. And a lot of this, I got to give credit to uh, coach V at Laurier um, as my, as my primary defensive mentor, uh, the five man pressures uh, stuff is, is big influence from him. And then Scott Brady on the fire zone stuff um, is uh, the McMaster defensive coordinator. Both those guys do this at a super high level. I'm just, you know, trying to make it work um, on my end, but that that's kind of where some of this stuff comes from. So first thing would be five man pressures. So out of this base structure, if I want to now, cause one of the things that can become complicated when you run a base 30 is if you don't have a system for how to keep your coverages consistent, when you bring different players, it can create confusion for your linebackers. So for example, if you run a blitz where your boundary backer blitzes, how you replace that backer is important in coverage. And it can be a point of confusion for players. So if you've stuck around to this last 10 minutes, th this is probably the best stuff we've done. So if I'm going to bring my boundary backer, again, usually I'm bringing my mic, but if I'm going to, if I want to bring the boundary backer to be my edge rusher, okay, I need to replace him with somebody. What I would do is replace him with the X backer. So our X is now going to come down and replace our boundary backers job in whatever coverage we're in. Then you can do anything you want because you still have the mic. We need somebody to take the back. So if you want to be simple, you could just say the mic has the back. We're going to bring four, whatever, easy. Okay. What I would do is, in, and have a number of options for this is have a variety of five man pressures. So for example, um, we could bring, you know, like NCAA America's blitz, whatever you want to call it. 
where we're going to bring, we're going to slant away from the pressure. Okay, we're going to contain through that field B gap. Whoop, my lines aren't great there, Brito. Okay, and then I'm going to delay. I'm going to, you know, my mic is going to play. Is the running back out? Is the running back out? If not, we're going to blitz through that second back, that second gap. Okay, so again, if we get running back quick to this flat, we're going to peel the end. So the, the front owns the running back here. Okay, nothing changes to the field. If the running back wants to go out the other way, now the mic isn't going to blitz and the mic is going to take the back. But the good news is when you're an empty, right, you're only protecting with five. If I'm bringing four, right, if we're an empty, we got to try and get pressure with four. Okay, and then that lets you play whatever coverages you want in the back end. So, for example, I would love to play tri lock, okay, where we're locking up the field corner and we're playing three on two, kind of those three on twos we talked about with the Iowa State stuff over two and three and over one and two here in the boundary. And now it's my X, not even my linebacker that's playing inside in that tri lock. If we want to bring that pressure to the field, the only thing that changes is now the X is going to replace the field backer. Now the X is going to drop and replace the field backer. Our field backer is going to be in the pressure, right? We'll bring the pressure from the other side. And now the boundary backer is not, not blitzing. Okay. So you could get, you could do whatever you want with, with those, with those pressures, right? Where do you insert the mic? Do you stunt the defensive line? You know, another good one would just be, um, you know, doing a, a similar deal. Same if we're going to keep, let's do a field pressure one. Now you could have, um, you could have your field backer off the edge. You can run your nose, run the stunt with the R. And then again, have that delay rush show up wherever you want it, right? So you could, you know, you could even just spy the quarterback with your mic backer, um, however you want to play it. Um, but you get those five man pressures and play any of your base coverages behind it. So you can play any of your base coverages behind it because you're manning the back up with the rush, right? The front is handling the back. So you still have the same pass distribution on the back end. So that's one. The second one would be fire zone stuff. And uh, I intend on getting some good use out of this. So I'm not going to give up everything, but um, from a fire zone perspective, you know, again, you're going to play some kind of cover three or cover four behind it. You're going to be short a few underneath zones, but you're really going to overload the protection from one side. Okay. So you could bring long, let's say you're going to bring it from the field, long stick your end, nose works away. Okay. You could have your field backer spill the tackle. And then, you know, you could have your free safety off this edge. How do you replace that? You could do a number of ways to keep it consistent. The way that would be easiest in my opinion is your X replaces the free safety. Your mic replaces the field backer. Bang. Nothing changes on the backside. Okay. You're going to be one player short. So you're probably going to want to play cover three. So, you know, if you, if you've got your corner in the flat, you know, you can get your half high here. Corner high here, half in the flat. Now your mic becomes your field wall. Your X becomes your middle of the field player. Your boundary backers, your boundary wall, your boundary corners, your uh, your boundary flat player. Okay, um, so you can run again a number of different blitz paths, right? You could change up, you know, your free safety. You could bring on the inside of it and bring your, your field backer on the edge. You could, you know, stunt the free safety down to the A gap. Um, you know, you could bring the free off the edge. This is probably my favorite. Free off the edge. Uh, Bama runs this all the time, looks great. 
they got some pretty good players though, Braden. So I don't know if it's this done or if it's them, but it looks good. A couple of first round picks. Yeah, just a few. And then fooled this guy back inside. That's probably my favorite personally. Um, and uh, just change up the path uh, and get the same pressure. So for the five people still watching, um, that's that stuff I think could be really effective at the high school level. And I know that because it's really effective at the university level. And, you know, the O-lines are better and the quarterbacks are better. Um, anyone who watched Mac on their playoff run two years ago, they got a ton of uh, stuff out of this. And, and Scott Brady did a great – we'll have to link it in the, uh, in the comments when we post the video. But Scott Brady did a, a great clinic on pressure um, and talked about their fire zones they use at Mac um, in, uh, uh, in an earlier video. So – that would be kind of my keys. I'm happy to, to answer any questions here. The questions have been a little quiet for a bit, um, but I know I've been basically talking straight. So it's kind of, I know it can be hard to, you know, pay attention to what I'm saying and, um, you know, also get the questions out there. So by no means, you know, do, did, did I cover everything you could do out of, out of these fronts? Uh, but I think if you're a little worried about covering down on a quick pass game um, or you want to play like quarters, and you don't want your linebackers to have to go a country mile. Um, you know, I think this stuff is good stuff. Uh, when the mic becomes the field wall, does that mean he's getting hands on anyone running a crossing route? What do you teach him to do? So I've just found in high school that if you put hands on any receiver, uh, it's a flag, which is annoying because it's not the spirit of the rule. And it's, you know, people like Braden that perpetuate this punishing of defenses via penalties. But um I don't, I would definitely say we want to play all the routes inside out. Um, so you're going to want to take like, if number three here was to, you know, run uh, an in route, we would definitely want the mic to hold on that. Um, this is one of the, the few situations where I actually don't mind teaching like a spot drop, like getting to a spot and then visioning the quarterback. Cause you don't really have enough players to play all the route concepts. So you really got to kind of let your players vision the quarterback in this sense um, when you're playing fire zone, because you, you're short a player underneath. So I, I would tell the mic to drop to the inside hip of the number three. And if three goes in or out, you can pass it. Like, again, you're going to give up the, the underneath dump offs in some of this stuff um, as a trade off for better defending the run. Um, and also, uh, you know, putting yourself in a situation, to try to generate some pass rush. But you, I definitely want to play the routes inside out. So the mic would want, like, if three goes in, we're going to hold on three until the quarterback takes us off of three, or we pass three to our partner on the other side of the field. That's a great question. If you, Adrian, if you follow us on Twitter or Instagram, send me a DM and, and we can talk a bit more too. Because um, if you're interested in running some of this stuff, I could, I could, uh, I have some resources that are helpful. And I have a couple other really good YouTube videos that other people did that I based some of this off and I can't, I credit them right now. I can't think of uh, the names. It was almost a year ago. Um, but, you know, just going through type from videos on YouTube is very helpful. Um, any other questions, coaches? I appreciate the, especially the guys that have been with us for, for a while. If you haven't yet, you know, throw a like on the video, throw some in the chat. Against RPO heavy teams, would you alter the X's run fit based on the way the QB opens? So yeah, if you're in pistol, yes. Um, are we, if we're talking like spread, um, if I would have the X fit, like it depends. So if you're, if you're taking the, let me delete some lines here, uh, Kev. So let, let's just say you're getting like basic RPO. Um, So if we're in one back and we're getting RPO'd, so like let's say they're trying to throw the stop behind the will, like they're trying to RPO the boundary backer, trying to RPO the boundary back. So if that's what they're trying to do, and I don't, and they're showing us where the running back is. So the running back is pre-snap to a side, even if that's late. If they're up at all before the ball snapped, yes, I would have the X, because again, the X doesn't have a gap in in one back base structure. I would have the X then um, fit the C gap to the back and that pushes the boundary backer out and out of the fit. 
So that would be how I would fit one back RPOs. If we're if we were just getting zone read, if we we're just getting zone read, I wouldn't because I'd want the X to be able to be a second hitter on the back. And I think you can play shuffle from the linebacker. But if I had a super athletic quarterback, I, you could do that as well. But if the if the team is staying in pistol, sorry. If the team stays in pistol, then yeah, you could do it where based on where the quarterback opens. So you could say, hey, I, I think it's like belly and back key. I've heard smarter people than me talk about it. Um, but if the if the running basically if the quarterback opens his shoulders this way, then you know that they're reading this linebacker. Right. So then you'd be see the running back would kind of snake here. Right. So then you would say, hey, if the quarterback opens to you, if you see his belly, you stay on the on the uh, on the RPO, which is basically just the pitch phase of the old triple option. And then your X is going to fit the cutback uh, to uh, the cutback to quarterback um, would be how that would play out. Yeah, That's a great question, coach. While I'm talking about it, just because just to show you, okay, well, what if coach, what if we always see his two back? All we see is two back. I might not do this as a base, but uh, the way that I would do it is if you get two back, now your X is going to be in the fit. Just like your Sam linebacker would have to be in the fit um, if you got two back typically. So now my X is going to fit off the fullback. Okay. And it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like an apex position. Um, for, for that X, it's hard for the O-line to get to them. Um, and, you know, if wherever that extra gap appears, say we had a tight end week, now the X is going to fit that extra gap. Now there's some stuff you have to do when you get into like 31. Okay, so how are you going to handle that? Um, you know, personally, I would keep it the same. And then again, I would just make a call for, is my boundary half going to help the field side? Or is he going to double the boundary wide out? And I would double the boundary wide out as a base. So that's how I play two back in a nutshell. We'll do a whole other, we'll do a whole other one on defending two back. Um, and if I'm getting two back, I'm, I'm running the fire zones fair amount on first down. Cause you can show this presentation and every OC in the world is going to try and run the ball. Um, and uh, I learned real quick from Scott Brady that, you know, you can't always, you can show this presentation and if you're bringing the fire zone consistently, you can stop the run. Um, and it's something that makes it challenging for offenses. So if there's any other questions, I know there's a little bit of a lag. I'll give it about a minute. Um, and then we'll jump off here. If you enjoyed this, you know, please hit us up on, on Twitter and Instagram. We do consulting um, as well. Uh, I've actually got one coming up uh, tomorrow. Um, so yeah, hit us up. If, if you want, if you have some quick questions, I'm happy to answer them. If you want, you know, a, a super, in depth, hey, like we're looking at installing this, or you know, we're looking at we defend this, or you know, we we've run our, our RPOs this way, but we're looking to change it, whatever. Um, you know, we're happy to do uh, to to sit down on Zoom and and watch some video and and get on the chalkboard and and get some stuff ready for your team. So happy to do that as well. Um, but uh, it doesn't look like we have any more questions. Uh, so thanks everybody, super engaged in the chat today. Um, thanks particularly, you know, Adrian, Kevin. Uh, you guys are throwing so much stuff in there. Um, we'll be back next week. Uh, we're working on some good OUA speakers for July. Some uh, some OUA speakers that uh, will be in a recruiting blackout, so they'll have a little more time to to hop on and talk X, X's and O's. But uh, we'll be back next week. Probably release the topic later this week, um, and we'll keep rolling from there. Make sure you hit us up on social media. Uh, we got some big things coming in July, honestly, that are going to be really fun. So really looking forward to it. And, and thanks for being here. I'm going to take us off the line, but, you know, as always, the more people you share this with, you know, the more, uh, you know, we're going to be able to grow um, and, and ultimately the more people we're going to be able to help out. So appreciate everyone being on here. Um, you know, and we're, we're going to consistently be on here uh, for, you know, Tuesday nights um, going forward um, up until the start of July. And we'll probably have to find a new night because uh, me and Braden will both be coaching on Tuesday night, thankfully. Uh, it up. So starting July 5th. So we got a couple more Tuesday nights uh, and then we'll, we'll have to put our heads together and figure out what night we're going to switch it to, but we'll be going live once a week. 
you know, until you, until everybody's tired from hearing, hearing from us. So we'll see you later. Thanks.